Muslims have contributed a lot of incredible inventions to our society. So starting off at number 10, we have the invention of universities. Fatima al Faria, she was an Arab Muslim who's actually credited for founding the oldest existing, continually operating, as well as the first educational institution in the world to hand out degrees. Now, this is the University of Al Quranian, located in Fez, Morocco. So, you know, how did this all start, anyways? Well, when Fatima Al Faria's father passed away, he left some money behind for her and her sister. So, she used that inheritance to set up this new university. It started off originally as a mosque, and then over time, it turned out to become a place of education. Now, there are a lot of different subjects that were taught, including things like chemistry, medicine, algebra, grammar, astrology and a whole lot of other stuff. Even music as well was included. And there's a library that was founded at the university and it has more than 4,000 different manuscripts. 9th century Quran as well as the earliest collection of hadiths, which by the way are the records of the traditions and sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, are there as well. So not only did that invention have a big impact in the Muslim world, but it also had a huge impact in the world in general. Number nine, we have windmills. Now the windmill was invented in 634 for a Persian caliph. Initially though, electricity wasn't made from these windmills. However, what they were used for was to grind corn and draw water for irrigation. So over in Arabia, when the streams ran dry, the only source of power was the wind. So these windmills had about six or 12 sails that were covered in fabric or some sort of leaf, usually palm leaves. It was 500 years before the first windmill was seen in Europe. Vaccinations, everybody's talking about vaccinations, especially being in self-isolation, but that comes in at number eight. Most of us were taught in schools that vaccination was invented by Edward Jenner and Louis Pasteur, but it actually was a Muslim who first came up with this technique which was later then brought to Europe from Turkey by the wife of the English ambassador in the year 1724. So children over in Turkey were vaccinated with cowpox to fight off the deadly smallpox. And records indicate that this was at least 50 years before the West had discovered it. The astronomical computer comes in at number seven, and this is attributed to Miriam al Ijilia. She's famous for constructing astrolobes. And these things, they were used to determine the position of the sun as well as the planet and were in turn used in the fields of astronomy as well as used for horoscopes and also in astrology. During the period of the 10th century in Aleppo, Syria, she created different designs that were very intricate and from the years 944 to 967 AD, she was hired by the ruler of the city, Saif al-Dala. World maps are next. Thank God for maps or else would be so lost. But have you seen this? There's this 12th century map. This map was created by an Andalusian cartographer named Al Idrisi, and he lived between the years of 1100 to 1166. So this is the map that was produced in Sicily and is seen as the most complete and accurate description of the world that was made in medieval times. Now it was used a lot by travelers for many centuries and it contained detailed descriptions of the Christian world as well as the Islamic world and Africa as well as different parts of the world. At number five, we have magnifying glasses slash glasses. There's a scholar by the name of Hassan Im El Haytham from Basra, Iraq, and he was the first person to describe how the eye actually works. So he carried out various different experiments with reflective materials, and he was able to prove that our eyes, they don't emit rays to perceive our world, because that was a popular belief at the time. But he also discovered that the curved glass surface can actually be used for magnification. His glass reading stones, as they were called, were the first magnifying glasses that were ever invented. And it was from these that the modern day glasses were later developed, and of course, magnifying glasses as well. And then of course, that led to contact lenses, which I'm wearing right now. But it all started from that one invention. Number four, clocks. What would we do without these things. There's a man by the name of Al Jazari from Turkey, and he was a very religious Muslim, and he was a very skilled engineer who actually created the concept of automatic machines. 
By the year 1206, Al Jazari, he had made numerous clocks of all different shapes, all different sizes. So just as we need time today to structure our daily lives, of course, Muslims did also more than 700 years ago. Muslims knew that it was really, really, really important to know time because they can structure their lives as well as they were able to know when to pray at the right time each and every single day and announce the call to prayer in the mosques. And adding the structure of a clock that showed time really, really, really helped with promoting that. And number three, we have cameras. So Hassan ibn al-Haytham also appears again right here. Now this guy was a genius. He came up with the revolution of optics. He rejected the Greek idea that an invisible light emitted from the eye caused sight like we were talking about before. And then he believed that vision was caused by light reflecting off an object and entering our eyes. So of course he conducted an experiment and he used a dark room with a tiny pinhole on one side and a white sheet on the other side and he proved his theory. So light came through the pinhole and it projected an inverted image of the objects that were outside of the room on the sheet on the opposite side of the room. So he called this the Camara and the world's first camera obscura was created and now we get the modern day camera from that. Number two, we have flying machines. Awas ibn Firnes was the first person to make a real attempt at constructing a flying machine and actually made it fly. So back in the ninth century, he designed this device with wings on it and it kind of looked like a bird costume. So he conducted a trial run over in Spain and then he was able to fly upwards for a little bit before he fell all the way down to the ground. He ended up breaking his back though, which was very, very, very unfortunate. But in any case, his designs would be an inspiration for all future flying vehicles that came after that. And now, you know, it's just a regular part of our life now. We just hop on an airplane and we go. And then finally at number one, hospitals. Oh my God, these things are so important. But the first modern hospital with nurses and a training center was over in Cairo in Egypt. The hospital is known as the Ahmed Im Tulun Hospital and it was established in the year 872. All patients there received free health care, which was a Muslim tradition that was institutionalized with the advent of the hospital. So this model would later serve as the template for all future hospitals all around the world. Too bad though, not everybody does have access to free healthcare. Hopefully that becomes a reality, especially during times of outbreaks and pandemics when people really, 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 really need it. So I'm looking at 10 surprising Muslim discoveries and inventions that we still use today. We got number 10 first, hospitals. So the first modern hospital with nurses and training center and everything was in Cairo. The Ahmed Ibtulun Hospital was established in the year 872. All patients received free health care, which was a Muslim tradition that was institutionalized when the hospitals started to become a thing. Now this model would later serve as a template for other hospitals that would appear in different parts of the world. And number nine is the toothbrush. So so Islam places a lot of emphasis on hygiene and the ancient Egyptians are thought to have chewed on twigs from what's called a toothbrush tree. However, these twigs also known as miswaka became known to a lot more people when the Prophet Muhammad started using them regularly to brush his teeth. The Quran does not mention miswak twigs specifically, however many Islamic scholars have mentioned it in their writings. Number 8 brings us magnifying glasses glass as well as glasses. It's grouped together and you'll see why. The scholar Hassan ibn al-Haytham from Bashra, Iraq was the first person to describe how the eye actually works. He carried out some experiments with reflective materials and proved that our eyes don't actually emit rays to perceive our environment as it was believed up until then. He also discovered that curved glass surfaces can actually be used for magnification. His glass reading stones were the first magnifying glasses that were ever created and it was from these that glasses were later developed. So people started wearing them on their face to now see 
better, increased magnification, and of course that led to telescopes and binoculars, so many other things. An amazing one is also the camera. So Hassan ibn al Hitham appears again for his revolutionization of optics. So he completely rejected the Greek idea that invisible light rays emitted from our eyes and that caused sight and he believed that vision was caused by light reflecting off an object and entering our eye. In a genius experiment using a dark room with a pinhole on one side and a white sheet on the other side, he proved this theory. Light came through the pinhole and it projected an inverted image of objects that were outside of the room on to the sheet on the opposite side. He called this the Camara and it was the world's first camera obscura which we get the term camera from. Clocks come in at number six. So there was an ingenious man called Al Jazeri from Turkey and he was a very devout Muslim as well as a highly skilled engineer and he created the concept of automatic machines. By the year 1206 Al Jazeri had made numerous clocks of all shapes and sizes. So of course as we need time today to stay on schedule, structure our lives, so did Muslims over 700 years ago. They knew that it was important to know the time so that they can do things like their regular prayers and things like that. So this of course was a revolutionary invention. At number 5 we have surgical instruments. So back in the 10th century the surgeon Abul Qasim Khalif Il Abad Al Zawahri, he was a man known in the west as Abul Qasis and he he wrote the Al Tadrif, his medical encyclopedia, which included a section called On Surgery. And this had a large collection of over 200 surgical tools. Using instruments for surgery was a very revolutionary concept because it actually enabled science to change from just being a speculative theory to something that can be experimental now. His work was the first in history of the medicine to illustrate the use of surgical instruments and their design have only changed a little bit in a thousand years. So it were these illustrations that would lay the foundations for surgery in Europe and in other parts of the world. The fourth spot brings us flying machines. So Abbas Ibn Furnas, he was the first person to make a real attempt to construct a flying machine and actually fly. In the 9th century he designed a winged device that looked like a bird costume and in a trial run that he did in Spain, Furnace flew upward for a few moments before falling right down and breaking his back. His design would be an inspiration for future flying devices and vehicles. At number three brings us coffee. So coffee to a large degree is the best known of the Muslim world's exports. While it originated in Ethiopia, it soon found its way over to the Red Sea to the Arabian Peninsula where it grew in popularity. The legend tells us of an Arab goat herder who noticed their change in mood when the goats ate a certain berry. So he boiled the berries and came up with the first coffee. So yeah, coffee, a very interesting origin story. I know there are some conflicting origin stories out there, but let me know what you think down below. Yeah, Muslim invention or not? This one is probably the one I was a little bit eh about, but sources do indicate that this was a Muslim invention. Algebra is at number two. So the word algebra comes from the title of a Persian mathematician and his famous work in the 9th century. And that was called the Kitab al Jabir wal i Mugabala. Muhammad ibn Musa Porazim introduced the beginnings of algebra, and it was a revolutionary move away from the Greek concept of mathematics, which was for the most part based on geometry. He also was the first person to introduce a concept of raising a number to a power. And in at number one we have the modern standing army. So the first modern standing army was developed by the Ottoman Empire. While technically speaking you know a slave army in the early days in Europe was thought to be the first standing army but of course other standing armies did exist as well in the past like the Romans and the Spartan armies for example. However unlike other armies before them the genesis soldiers were actually paid a regular income and they were however forbidden to marry and engage in any type of trade. They would later become famed and known for their internal cohesion, their strict discipline as well as their fighting skills. By the 17th century their power would grow so much 
to a level that they were able to become what's called kingmakers in the Ottoman Empire and then they were later disbanded. We have universities. Fatima al Fureya was an Arab Muslim who is credited for founding the oldest existing, continually operating, and first educational institution in the world to award degrees. This is the University of Al Qurarin in Fez, Morocco. When Fatima's father passed away, he left some money behind for her and her sister, and she used her inheritance to build the university. It started off as a mosque and it later grew into a place for education. Now, there were a lot of different subjects, such as astrology, chemistry, grammar, algebra, medicine, and music. All of that was taught at this university. The library that was founded at the university contains more than 4,000 manuscripts as well as 9th century Quran and the earliest collection of hadith which are the record and traditions or sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. At number 9 we have the crank shafts. Many of the basics of modern automatics were first put to use in the Muslim world including the revolutionary crank connecting rod system. System. So by converting rotary motion, which is motion revolving around a center or an axis, to linear motion, the crank enables the lift of heavy objects more easily. The technology was discovered by Al Jazeera in the 12th century and it continued to spread globally and that's why we have things like bicycles as well as the internal combustion engine. Pointed arches come in at number 8. So these pointed arches, they're really characteristic of Europe's Gothic cathedrals, but it was actually an invention that was borrowed from Israel. Islamic architecture. It was much stronger than the rounded arch used by Romans, thus allowing the building to be made bigger and higher as well as more complex. Europe's castles also were modified to be more like the buildings in the Islamic world. The windmill was another invention attributed to the Islamic world. So the windmill was invented in 634 for a Persian caliph and initially electricity wasn't made from these windmills. Instead they were used to grind corn as well as drop water for irrigation. In Arabia when the water streams ran dry the only source of power was the wind. These windmills had 6 or 12 sails and it was about 500 years before the first windmill was seen in Europe. Now we got vaccination. So most of us were taught in school that inculcation or vaccination was invented by Edward Jenner and Louis Pasteur. It was actually Muslims who first came up with this technique which was later brought to Europe from Turkey by the wife of the English ambassador in the year 1724. Children in Turkey were vaccinated with cowpox to fight the deadly smallpox at least 50 years before the West had discovered it. Halfway in we got rocket and torpedoes. Although the Chinese invented saltpeter and gunpowder and used it in their fireworks, it was actually the Arabs who worked out that it could be purified using potassium nitrate and be used for military purposes. By the 15th century they had invented both a rocket, which they called a self moving and combusting egg, and also they invented a torpedo which was a self propelled pear shaped bomb with a spear at the front of it which allowed it to impale enemy ships and then explode. Now this one was really surprising, paychecks. So the modern paychecks comes from the Arabs because trading was a popular profession of the 9th century. So a written vow to pay for goods when they were delivered was developed by a Muslim businessman. So anyone could cash a check in China that was from a bank in Baghdad let's say. Now this was done in order to avoid money having to be transported across lands that was dangerous because you risk them getting stolen in transit. Shampoo comes in at number 3. So washing and bathing are required for Muslims to pray which is perhaps why they really perfected the recipe for soap that is still used today. Hazrat Salih, he's known to have invented soap as we know it today. The ancient Egyptians had soap of a sort as well as the Romans did. But it was the Arab Muslims who combined vegetable oils and sodium hydroxide as well as scented ingredients. And the shampoo was introduced to England by a Muslim who opened Muhammad's Indian vapor bath in the year 1759. We're coming down close to the end of this video. Number two brings us world maps. So have you seen this 12th century map of the Andalusian cartographer Al Idrisi? He lived from 1100 to 1166. This map was first produced in Sicily and is seen as the most complete description of the world that was made in medieval times. It was used a lot by travelers for centuries and it contained detailed descriptions of the 
the Christian world as well as the Islamic world and also Africa and other places. Now the number one Muslim discovery and invention is astronomical computers. Maryam al idliya is famous for constructing astrolabes which were used to determine the position of the sun and the planets and were in turn used in the field of astronomy, astrology as well as horoscopes. During the 10th century in Aleppo, Syria, she created designs that were so intricate from 944 to 967 AD that she was hired by the ruler of the city, Saif al dala So at number 10, you can thank Muslims for Arabic numerals. Have you ever wondered why the numeric system we use is called Arabic? You can thank the early Islamic world for that. Arabic numerals first appeared in print in the early 9th century AD and became widespread by the 10th century, but they may have had their own origins from Hindu Arabic numerals dating to around 6th century AD. These were passed to Baghdad by Persian and Arabic mathematicians. The current form we are familiar with in the West was later developed in North Africa, and it was later adopted in Europe around the 11th to 12th century AD. At number 9 is coffee brewing, which is another Muslim thing. Whilst there are some earlier accounts of coffee use, the first credible one is from the 15th century in Yemen. It was here that the first evidence of coffee seeds being roasted and brewed is first seen. After this period, coffee use had reached the rest of the Middle East and was widely consumed around Persia, Turkey, and Northern Africa. Coffee brewing was later introduced to Europe, namely Italy, in around the 17th century. A vibrant coffee trade soon sprung up between the mercantile city of Venice and suppliers in North Africa. Today, it is one of the most popular beverages in the world. So at number 8 is the modern standing army, which was also Muslim. Much to the dismay of Europe during the late Middle Ages, the first modern standing army was developed by the Ottoman Empire. Whilst technically speaking a slave army, the Janissaries were the first modern example of a standing army in Europe. Records show that they were most likely formed in around the 14th century AD. Early corps consisted primarily of kidnapped and captured boys who were forced to convert to Islam and fight for the Sultan. They would later become famed for their internal cohesion, strict discipline, and fighting power. By the 17th century, their power would go to such a level that they were able to become kingmakers in the Ottoman Empire and were later disbanded. The counterweight trebuchet was probably also a Muslim. The earliest record description of a counterweight trebuchet comes from the 12th century Islamic world. Commentaries were made during the conquest of Saladin by one Mardi ibn Ali al tarsusi What is unclear is whether it was developed independently by them or adopted from early Chinese models. Whatever the case, the depiction seems very similar to the classic trebuchet familiar to medieval battlefields. At number 6 is the Damascus steel, which was a Muslim invention. Damascus steel was forged steel created from ingots of wood steel. It was used extensively for swords and were characterized by their distinctive patterns. The name is derived from Damascus in Syria, where they first appeared. Whether they were superior to other steel blades is the realm of legend, but their beauty was probably their unique selling point. So at number 5 is the Oud. The Oud is a short neck, lutey like pear-shaped stringed instrument that first appeared in the Islamic world. It is widely considered the forerunner to the European lute. Ouds are in turn thought to derive from earlier Persians' barbarats and other similar instruments that have been used in the Middle East for thousands of years. The first description of the modern oud was by an 11th century Muslim musician, Al Hassan ibn Al Haytham. Today it is still widely used in around the Middle East and is still a fond favorite amongst musicians around the world. At number 4 is optics. Many of the most important advances in the study of optics come from the Muslim world, says Hassani. Around the year 1000, Ibn al hatami provoked that humans see objects by light reflecting off of them and entering the eye. This great Muslim physicist also discovered that camera obscura phenomenon, which explains how the eye sees images upright due to the connection between the optic nerve and the brain. At number 3 is Claude. An indigenous man called al Jazari from Southeast Turkey was a Muslim and a highly skilled engineer who gave birth to the concept of automatic machines. By 1206, Al Jazari had made numerous clocks of all shapes and sizes. Just as we need time today to structure our lives, so did Muslims over 700 years ago. Al Jazari was sticking to the long Muslim tradition of clock making. They knew it was important to know the time so it could be used well through doing good deeds, knowing when to pray at the right time each day, and announce the call to prayer in mosques. At number two is flying machines. Abbas ibn Firnas was the first person to make a real attempt to construct a flying machine and actually fly. In the 9th century, he designed a winged apparatus which roughly resembled a bird costume. In his most famous trial in New York, Spain, Firas flew abroad for a few minutes before plummeting to the ground and partially breaking his back. His designs would have undoubtedly been an inspiration for the famous Italian artist and inventor Leonardo da Vinci some 600 years later. 
Last but not least is maps. Maps have helped people find their way for about 3,500 years, the earliest ones being on clay tablets. The introduction of paper was a huge leap forward in the art of map making. Modern technology uses a system of satellites and other receiving devices to compute positions on the earth. Back in history, maps were made from travelers and pilgrims' accounts. The bug of traveling had bitten the 7th century Muslims and they soon began to leave their homes for trade and for religious reasons to explore the world they lived in. They walked routes, sometimes simply gathering knowledge about new places. When they returned, they gave accounts of the people and sites that they had encountered. <laughs>